Look, people making friends in the chat. So exciting. Okay, we're going to get started. Hello, hello. Okay, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sageta Fessa. I'm the program manager for Processing Foundation. I help run the fellowship uh, program. So I'm so excited to have you all here to talk about, yeah, one of my favorite things, fellowships. Um, and, you know, supporting y'all's work and um, finding ways to give you guys resources and just, um, yeah, getting to talk a little bit about it. Um, like Hugh mentioned, this session is being recorded. So if you'd like to have your cameras off, feel free. If you don't feel comfortable being recorded, um, there are other ways to get in contact with us that don't, you know, require you being on the Zoom. If you have questions, again, we're an email away. There's other ways to contact us. You, you don't have to participate in that way. Um, I, we're just going to go around for the folks who are uh, processing staff who are supporting this call and just say a quick hello and where we're coming from. Um, so it's like I use she, her pronouns. I'm currently on the Wamish land in Seattle, Washington, but I'm often normally based in Brooklyn, Lenape, Hoking. Um, I'm excited to be here and I'll just pass it to Sonia. Hi everyone, um, my name is Suyan or Sonia Choi. You can call me either or, I use they them pronouns. I am the program and um, uh, communications coordinator for Processing Foundation. Sorry, I just like blanked out a little bit. Um, and yeah, I am here to support you all throughout this info session. I'm really excited to learn about everyone's work. I'm currently based in Lenape Hoking, also known as Brooklyn, New York. Um, and yeah, so excited to, to get to like talk to everyone and learn about y'all's projects. I will popcorn it to Q. Hi, this is Q or Chen Chen. I am the P5JS project, fellow, uh, project lead. I was a fellow myself in 2019, uh, which really kicked off my work with Processing Foundation. So I'd love to chat with you about my experience um, based in um, Tomaland, also known as Los Angeles. My pronouns are they, she. Uh, I will pop a coin to Saber. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, Saber here in New York. Um, I work for Processing, and I uh, help out education things. And uh, uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute with the fellowship. And my title is uh, outreach and partnerships with processing foundation. I'll put my email in the chat if you want to email about anything. Um, so that is it for our staff introductions. I'm gonna um, ground our space with our land and digital acknowledgements. Um, so, so the processing foundation has no physical location. Our team works remotely in the lands of the Tongva, Chumash, Ohlone, Cheyenne, Arapo, Arapaho, uh, Lipa Napachi, Lenape, and, uh, and Canarsi peoples, as well as a neighborhood in Germany whose streets are named after African countries Germany has colonized. We work across digital platforms, servers, and technological devices that are connected through electric wiring and transmissions, traveling across the US and throughout the globe. We invite you to meditate on this digital fragmentation and infrastructure that lays its foundation through the global white capitalist, colonialist, and imperialist framework we live in today. We and our devices exist on stolen land. Our digital infrastructures exist globally through foundations of anti-Blackness, anti-indigeneity, Orientalism, racism, heterosexism, femphobia, slavery, classism, colorism, ableism, ageism, surveillance capitalism, sizeism, and religious imperialism. We invite you to remember the labor and love of QT BIPOC femme, elder, disabled, low-income healers, crafters, technologists, storytellers, and artists. We acknowledge the natural systems of the universe that inspire digital technology, but that producing and maintaining and disposing of technology is extractive and appropriative. We hope to give attention to nourish and co-evolve with life affirming and celebrating forces that teach us the power of endurance as our plant, animal, earth, and human ancestors who have survived throughout the beginning of time. This is in remembrance of the spirits that are embedded in the technologies we have evolved with. 
We acknowledge and honor the main, many native lands you are joining us from and invite you to this grounding by visiting native-land.ca, as well as those of us who are on lands that have experienced many forms of violence from colonization, imperialism, feudalism, capitalism, casteism, patriarchy, tribalism, to xenophobia. For those who reside in contexts that currently benefit from oppressive systems, we encourage you to meditate on the intricate webs that create structures of privilege from extraction of the global South, while holding space for nuances of bodies that are oppressed by these systems existing in those contexts. We also acknowledge that the world doesn't exist in a binary and that oppressed peoples can have a history of being oppressors and vice versa. We encourage you to visit nativegovorg make and impact to uh, donate, sponsor, follow, and share resources to take action. And so this acknowledgement can be adapted to fit anyone's needs in space holding and may be used without permission with credit. We wish to amend this acknowledgement annually as well as for different space holding needs for our foundation and beyond. Um, you can also find a copy of our land and digital acknowledgements on our website, processingfoundation.org. So this land and digital acknowledgements is inspired by data and society and disab uh, disab uh, disability futures digital land acknowledgements. Um, and so thank you all for um sharing the space with us digitally wherever you are um and so i will hold um i will pass it on to sige who will walk us through our mission statement thank you um for reading that and um yeah um yay okay so we're going to get started with a little bit of information, some back history on Processing Foundation. For those of you who might not be as familiar with the organization or maybe familiar with a particular corner of the organization, hopefully this will help to kind of give you a holistic picture of what you're walking into um, in terms of joining us with the fellowship program. Um, I also invite other staff members as I'm walking through. If you all have anything you want to add, this is your moment. Feel free to shine, um, but I'm just going to read off of these slides. So for the Processing Foundation, our mission statement is to promote software learning within the arts, artistic learning within technology related fields, and to celebrate the diverse communities that make these fields vibrant, liberatory, and innovative. Our goal is to support people of all backgrounds in learning how to program and to make creative work with code, especially those who might not otherwise have access to tools and resources. And you could just click through some of the, thank you. Um, we also believe that some of the most radical futures and innovative technologies are being built by communities that have been pushed to the margins by dominant tech. We hope to support those who have been marginalized by technology in continuing self determinant and continued self determination by providing time, space, and resources. We work towards our goals by developing and distributing a group of related software projects, which includes processing Java. P5.js, JavaScript, and processing Android, and by facilitating partnerships and collaborations with allied organizations and individuals to build a more diverse community around software and the arts. The Processing Foundation is specifically invested in expanding the communities of technology and the arts to support those who have not had equal access because of their race, gender, class, sexuality, immigration, documentation status, age, geographical location, and disability. Every year we support and sponsor programs that nurture diverse communities and their projects. Um, I'm gonna pass it off to Q to talk a little bit about programs. Um, our programs include, and then I'll just, um, our program includes the fellowship project, uh, which you can see in the bottom left, which is our cohort from last year, including an amazing uh, group of people working on software, community, and teaching. And on the top left, on the top left, uh, it's some public event we did with W3C and about uh, uh, a more ethical web. And on the top right, it's an event we did with um, CS for all. Um, and the bottom uh, right is GSOC, uh, which is Google for a uh, Google Summer of Code program, 
uh, which we actually just announced. Uh, we, we just um, um, finalized our final group for this year. Um, so, which is a program that is for beginner contributors who wants to get mentorship and stipend to work on contributing to open source software project. Yeah. Um, at our core is the philosophy and politics of philosophy, free, liberate, open source software. We see software as a medium and a means for thinking and making. We believe that learning to program is not only about acquiring a certain skill set, but also about developing a creative and exploratory process. We believe software and the tools to learn it should be accessible to everyone. Amazing. Thank you. And thank you for putting it in the chat um, a little bit more information. Uh, yay. Um, so this brings us to why we're on this call. Woo! the processing foundation fellowship oh my god yes we are currently accepting applications the ex the program fellowship has been extended so you have a little bit more time um until may 15th um so i don't know it's like a little bit more it's like a week and some change um the processing foundation fellowship program supports artists designers activists educators engineers researchers codes and collectives and many combinations of these um, in projects that conceive new directions for our softwares, our communities, and open source software for artists. Uh, the themes for this year's projects are all around accessibility, AI ethics, and open source, ecology, and the environment, and internationalization. Um, so this year, uh, we're really excited because we've been able to increase the stipend for fellows to $10,000. We'll talk a little bit more about that. It, it mentions it in a couple more slides. We're just really excited to support you. It's a really big deal. Um, and a part of this fellowship program, we also have, there's the, the teaching fellows. Um, I don't know if Saber, you wanna talk a little bit about what the fellowship program has looked like in the past and also um, maybe give a little bit more information on the teaching fellowship. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to do that and happy to follow up with, over email with folks too. Um, so we have a, a special category within the fellowship category, which is your, if you're focused on making educational materials and making them available, um, you can apply for a teaching fellowship, and we have specific slots uh, picked out for that. Um, so we'll be picking three of those. And there, our intention is, as I just said, that you're going to make the materials, you're going to make them available. It also acknowledges, I think, that a big part of our community is educators, and that um, just like free and open source software needs a sort of free and open source education. So that's the intention there. If you do decide to go down this route, uh, we'll have a lot of interactions as we'll be working together and you'll be mentored by a previous uh, education fellowship. It's actually how I got involved, even though we didn't have education fellowships back then. Um, is there anything else to say? Um, oh, I guess the the other part is there is a larger ecosystem for education that we do that you can participate in. Any fellow can participate in. We do virtual CC Fest and in-person CC Fest, which is a vehicle for uh, fellows to present their work. Amazing. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, so this, we're going to kind of just go through um, some very basic FAQs, some just questions that you might have somewhere percolating as you're kind of reading through materials and that might help help you with your decision making in terms of whether the fellowship feels like it's for you and just um, give you a little bit more information on the fellowship. Um, also, we're going to have at the very end um, a Q&A. So I, I think we can start at any point if you have a question, um, you can just kind of type it into the chat and then we have, we're adding it to, we're live adding it to slides at the bottom of the, um, of the presentation. And so we'll try our best to answer. Some of y'all have already emailed questions, so we're gonna do our best to address those. Um, and yeah, so we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that. And then if, if time permits, it would be great to maybe hear about a couple people's projects we do want to make sure to give we have you know we want to get out on at, in, on the hour so we're not trying to hold you up for the rest of your day but um feel free to kind of yeah populate your questions and maybe later on flex your um projects uh okay so we're just going to go through the facts okay what is the processing foundation fellowship program the Processing Foundation Fellowship Program is an annual initiative that supports artists, designers, activists, educators, engineers, researchers, coders, and collectives who are passionate about making a positive impact through open source software for the arts. So like we said, fellows receive $10,000 stipend, mentorship, and public facing opportunities to showcase um, the work that they produce.
who is eligible to apply for the fellowship program. The fellowship program is open to individuals and collectives worldwide. Um, we'll get back into this. You don't have to necessarily be US based. I know that's a question that we've gotten a couple times. You can be anywhere. We've had folks um, participate from, I think literally every continent, but Antarctica. So, you know, you're willing to, you're, you're more than welcome who are interested in utilizing open source software for creative purposes. Applicants should be passionate about making a positive impact in the fields like accessibility, AI ethics, and open source um, ecology and the environment, internationalization, and continuing support with one of the open source ecosystems, within the open source ecosystem. How do I apply for the fellowship program? Um, to apply for the fellowship program, please visit the Processing Foundation website and complete the online application form. Um, there's also, um, if you are, if, if typing is hard for you, uh, thank you for posting it. Yes, it's in the chat now. Um, if you are, oh, Yes, the, that's on the website, but I can we can do a more direct link to it in a bit. Um, if you'd like to not type, you can also do audio. Um, you can record your answers. Um, if there's another way that would support you and access, you know, feel free to contact us. We want to feel as accessible as possible to you. Um, and just be sure to submit your application before the deadline, which is May 15th, um, midnight PST. What is the selection process for the fellowship program? The selection process for the fellowship program is based through a, fellow, a thorough review of applications by the Processing Foundation team and a panel of external reviewers. The evaluation is based on applicants' proposed projects, its alignment with the foundation's mission, and its potential impact on the creative tech community. Towards the end of um, this process, you might also be called in for an interview and uh, finalists who are inside of uh, this, the, the fellowship program application process also receive a stipend for their time, dedication, and for you know just us wanting to support your work. So we really do want to support as many people's projects as possible, just given whatever you know restraints we have in terms of resource. But um, yeah, resourcing you and being connected with all of you is really important to us. Even if you don't end up being in the fellowship program or a finalist, please stay plugged in. We will find ways to work with you and support your work. What benefits do fellows receive? Other than spending three months hanging out with me um, and Saber and the team, uh, the fellows also receive, like we said, $10,000 stipend, mentorship. Um, so mentorship in terms of people who've been a part of our networks. Um, we try to think of, of people who might fit well with your project um, and where you might be needing support. Um, and that could be uh, folks who've worked with us in the past, staff members, um, just folks who were within our network that might be supportive to you and public facing opportunities to showcase your work. And that's gonna look like a required um, kind of creative output at the end of the fellowship. And then also we can work together to kind of build out what that looks like. Um, definitely don't wanna impede on fellows having all the time that they need to complete their work, but also want to give you an opportunity should you want it um, outside of just that one output. We'll have more conversations to kind of build this out together as a fellowship. Um, they also gain access to the Processing Foundation's network of artists, designers, activists, educators, engineers, researchers, coders, and collectives to collaborate and share with uh, for their fellowship. So yeah, you get to join this um, fun little, you know, community of uh, lovely weirdos. And next. How long is the fellowship program? Um, unfortunately, it's only three months. You know, it's not a lifetime. You don't get to do this forever, but it's okay. Um, your work can go on forever, but the Processing Foundation Fellowship Program runs for approximately three months. Um, so I'll be during the summer, starting June 1st. During this time, fellows are expected to do their work on their projects, to participate in mentorship sessions and cohort check-ins. Can I apply as a team or collective? Yes, teams and collectives are welcome. You can apply together for the fellowship program. And if you're selected, the $10,000 stipend will be distributed to the collective as a whole and not as individual payments. So you won't all get $10,000. Unfortunately, it's to the entire project, but you'll be able to kind of use that as you see fit. Um, and it doesn't say here, but it'll be, in case people are wondering, um, you get two kind of um, payouts of the stipend, kind of one at the start and then one later on in the program. So there'll be there'll be two kind of like um, what you would call them, monies, two monies times. <laughs> I think that's a technical term. Payments. Thank you, thank you. Together we can. Um, all right. 
do I need to be proficient in programming or coding to apply? While programming and coding skills can be beneficial, they are not a strict requirement for applying to the fellowship program. We encourage individuals with a diverse background and skill sets to apply as long as they are passionate about making a positive impact through open source software for the arts. Try to speed through these. Can I apply if I am not based in the United States? Like we said, yes, the Processing Foundation Fellowship is open to applicants worldwide. We encourage individuals from diverse regions and backgrounds to apply. This is a completely virtual and digital uh, fellowship program. So yes, you do not need to necessarily be based in the United States. Where can I find more information about the Processing Foundation and the fellowship? For more information about the Processing Foundation and the fellowship program, please visit our website. Feel free to follow us on social media. You can send us your questions. Um, I'm actually also going to plop in here. I think it's really useful for folks who are interested in applying to kind of look at past fellows and maybe some of the projects that have gotten, um, gotten greenlit in the past. So I'm just gonna put in here two links if you wanna look in the chat, um, just to the past two years of fellows, um, just in case you want to, to look. Um, at people's work that have come by. Um, hey, Sagan, uh, do you mind if I quickly jump in um, while there's a quick minute? Uh, yes. Just a few questions come up that might be useful and I have to run, I apologize. So one is like, do I apply for a teaching fellowship or do I apply for a regular one? And it's okay if you don't totally know, uh, but you do have to kind of say which one you want to do and uh, we can figure out if it makes sense to be with the other group. So I think the way to decide that is if you want to put out educational materials and that's your ultimate goal, then teaching fellowship makes a lot of sense. If you're unsure and it's a kind of a broader project that's not a need in a budget uh, bucket, then maybe a regular fellowship and make more sense. The regular fellowship really covers anything that isn't covered by something else. So uh, it's kind of an all takers. Um, I think that's an easy one I can answer. There was a question about uh, Venezuela specific. I think we'll have to check with lawyers on that one. So we'll get back to you about that one. Um, and there's a few other ones, but I'll, I'll let you all uh, take those on. Um, but yeah, please do email if you have more questions about the education. I'll hang out for a couple more minutes, but um, good to see you all. Yay, thank you so much, Saber. And yes, um, feel free to chime in wherever you see an answer. And then when you have to go, we're happy to have had you for as long as you were available. Um, okay, so let's see, we can go to the next slide. Next slide after this. Thank you. So now we're going to begin our Q&A. And if anyone has uh, support in terms of staff to kind of help me copy and paste some of these into Q&A so we can answer them, um, feel free. But also if you don't, that's okay. I can I'll pull them out. But we'll just start with these questions. I think these were the ones that were um, a mix of those that were emailed, DM'd, and um, also some from the chat that I was able to pull. Yes, for the first one, I think Saber just um, just tried to answer this. This was the this was the version that was sent in. I do believe that folks from wherever are able to participate, but I don't. I'm not sure if there was something written here that was a little bit more context. Uh, for oh, okay, certain restrictions. Okay, I don't know about these uh, international sanctions, but um, I already saw, I think this, Jose, I think I saw your email prior to this. So um, we'll just continue to be in contact about it because that, that seems like something that might need a little bit more information than I have right now, but um, we'll figure it out with you. We'll figure it out. Um, and if it's possible, yes, <laughs> we'd love to have you. Um, okay, so the next question, Q, do you wanna uh, support with this question on P5? The next question is, can fellowship projects cover specific categories, features of processing slash p5.js, such as p5sound, and can they incorporate other libraries, frameworks that are web-based but not banned by processing, for example, node.js? The short answer for this is yes. The long answer for this is it depends also. Um, so for example, p5sound, we currently actually have a fellow already working on that, on a particular p5sound fellowship. Um, so, um, I think um, our uh, um, it's very broad when we, when, uh, when we think about like what kind of tools you want to incorporate in your project. And that tools normally are not the first um, like criteria for us to consider. It's mostly about the project, the concept, and what is the goal for that. Um, 
And of course, we would love to support more processing slash PFI related projects. But if you are incorporating other tools, I think that's that it's not like a uh, deal breaker for us. Amazing. Thank you, Q. And also feel free, any um, Q, Sonia, if you have any, if you want to support any answers, you know, you're welcome to also chime in. Um, and the next question here is, what is the expected time commitment for fellows during the three month uh, fellowship program? Are there specific milestones or deliverables that the fellows need to meet throughout the program? Um, there are, so we are trying to require like bi-weekly meetings. These are things that we're going to have to figure out together as a cohort in terms of there probably are going to be folks based in many different places, many different time zones. So trying to find the time that works best. Um, and then there'll be requirements in terms of you working with your mentor and just having kind of these like these general meetings. We're not trying to overwhelm you or take over your life. You're welcome. I think someone asked in the chat, um, DM'd me about if they could have a full-time job during this. Yes, you, this does not need to take up the entirety of your time. Um, this is to support the work that you're already engaged in and, and uh, but there are some requirements. And a lot of these, we are gonna be flushing them out together. Cause again, these, we have folks who will be participating from many different places. Um, in terms of milestones and deliverables, we will be checking in with you to, you know, kind of ensure that you are in fact working on your project. And there is at the end of our time together, we will have some kind of hope that it was gonna be a creative output, some kind of a creative output. It could look something as low lift as like a medium article where we interview you and kind of talk about your process, your work, what's been happening. Um, it can look as large as you publishing some kind of a project. We have hopes of doing um, kind of with our past fellows and current fellows, some kind of on conferences in the future and potentially exhibition opportunities. It really depends on um, what you know, the fellows in this cohort want and how, what we can do together. Um, I think there are like the bare minimum requirements and then there's, I, I think the sky is the limit-ish in terms of what we can kind of um, craft together. So that's a long-winded, uh, we will figure it out as we go um, answer. Uh, another question here, would we be able to edit our submission now that the deadline has extended? Um, yeah, I think, Perhaps a good way to do that um, might be to resubmit if you have your, you know, if you can, and then just maybe send an email to us saying that you're resubmitting. Um, I don't know another way that's not so clunky to do that, but yeah, I feel I think if you have a, some things you want to change, um, do that, and then just kind of email uh, me or and you know the foundation at um, processing.org to let us know that that's what you're doing. Is it possible to apply for two projects for the processing fellowship? I suppose it is. Um, please, maybe don't. <laughs> um, I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, inside of, I'm not, I'm not sure if this question is for inside of one application or if these are two separate applications. Um, we are trying to support you with, you know, just, I mean, one project alone is kind of a lot to do in three months or work on in three months. Um, if you have two in mind, or maybe if they're somehow connected, perhaps, um, but I think, you know, keeping it as clear and also doable as possible is going to help you, um, I think, in terms of getting selected and also, you know, being able to accomplish what you're looking to do. Is there an additional accessibility grant with the stipend to ensure equal opportunity for disabled artists? Um, we don't have that at this time, but we do have... Um, additional funds um, in case fellows need, um, like do need some support outside of what is already um, kind of being um, offered. So I think uh, it would have to depend on what was what needs uh, were communicated to the foundation. Um, but at this time, we don't have a specific grant for that. But I think that's um, something that we should look into. So thank you for asking that question. Um, do we need to have a lot of knowledge or experience with processing or just a keen interest to learn and create? Um, it's giving, learn and create, you know? Um, <laughs> I think we've come, covered this a couple different ways and we just kind of talked about it um, earlier, but yeah, I think it's mostly um, uh, having a passion and being interested in this work um, and a vision for a particular project. Yeah, and for whomever who is sharing, can you, uh exit and come back because we added some uh, questions that's not refreshed yet. You, uh, I think you just need to, yeah, right there. Now you can share again. Uh, it's, yeah, from the first page. Oh, thank you so much, Q. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. 
Um, amazing. Okay, so we're, where are we? So we were here. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Can one apply for the fellowship program starting from July, 2023? Uh, um, I don't think so. I don't like saying no, but no, I don't think so. I think, our, you know, go ahead, yeah. Q. <laughs> so the, fe the fellowship ends in August. So if you felt like you can finish this project with 100 hour commitment uh, during that short period of time, you might be able to, but I, when we, when you apply for the fellowship, I think it's important to show the timeline of what you, how you want to distribute the different, uh, the task along the time. Uh, exactly. Like, I, uh, previously it's, oh, some fellow, maybe they will spend the first month to do research, which is more chill. And then maybe have the, uh, the second half to do more like heavy lifting production. That's also possible. So, if you want, if your project has to start in July, maybe uh, it's important to note how you uh, like to um, finish the project by August um, in, your, in your application. Exactly. And I would add that there are required meetings that will also be happening in June. So if you're not able to attend those meetings, that might be something also to, um, to consider. But, um, but yes, yeah, if you can spend the first month doing something like low lift, um, in terms of research or other things, um, these are things to consider. Uh, another question, I am a teacher that uses P5JS in daily lessons, but I also have a more specific AI interest. Can I apply for a fellowship and a teaching fellowship or do I need to pick one? Um, I, would, I would say you should pick one because they will be, um, they'll be, uh, we're gonna be separately looking at different at these different applications. So the folks who are kind of opting into the teaching fellowship or the fellowship, they'll be reviewed separately. So if you'd like to be considered for a teaching fellowship in the application, there is a point where you have to specify that. If you don't specify that, then we'll just assume that you're looking to do the fellowship at large, um, if that makes sense. Yay. Let's see. Um, and also, I know I'm talking a lot. I don't know if Q and Sonia, you want to, you're welcome to also read a question or jump in. I don't want to take up all the space, but I'll, I'll read the next few and then feel free. Um, how is passion for open source being assessed? Do I have to have a history of working with open source software or is it about passion for an open source in my own project? Um, yeah, I think that it's, um, that's a good question. I think it's it's a it's a little subjective. Um, so I think it is in terms of your project. You don't have to have lived your life as an open source advocate every single day out here waving the open source flag. But I think it's in terms of like you know you and your interest and dedication to a, your particular project that you're applying with for the fellowship. Yeah, um, I want to add a little bit on that. Yeah. Uh, in your application, I think it's important to uh, include all this previous project, no matter it's. Uh, you participate in other open source project or your own, but it's important to include that because otherwise the reviewers wouldn't know. So I think it's great to add links, you know, add images, things like that to your application. So uh, it's easier for us to access that your previous involvement with open source. Yes, thank you. And also, I think there are some folks who are DMing me privately. Uh, because I'm reading out these questions, I'm not able to kind of be on top of your private DM. So if you DM'd me a question, you might want to write it in the public chat where, you know, the other staff members are supporting seeing it. So just so we don't miss it. Uh, um, I also want to add a little bit on that for contributing open source software doesn't mean just to the code directly. So for my previous experience, before I applied for the fellowship in 2019, I didn't contribute to the source code of p 5 digest but I helped organize event. I helped translate the project uh, the website, uh, which was not directly code related. At the time, I wasn't really feeling very comfortable contributing to the code, but I want to get more into it. Uh, so for p 5 digest uh, for example, we, uh, we consider a lot of different ways uh, as contributing to PFAT, not just to the code. So when you think about contributing or working on open source project, you can mention like what are different ways because it's not just about the code or software. Amazing, thank you. Um, 
okay, our team is wondering how we should how we should apply as a group. The form is only one field for one first name, last name, et cetera. Should we apply or just have one group member apply? Um, I th you can just apply with like maybe the one person who's taking the lead on terms of the application. And then in, you know, later on, you know, just like in the application, let us know that you're a group um, and that there, you can list the people who are in it. You can find that it shouldn't be too challenging to do that. There's other folks who've done that in the past. Um, but if, if it becomes really challenging, I guess, follow up, I, I think you should be able to just incorporate that in there. Is there a list of mentor, mentors that have that will be participating during this fellowship period? Um, no, there's not at this moment. We try to kind of um, pair people up um, as they are selected. So we have folks who, who have, you know, a, who, who are open to being mentors again, or have been mentors in the past, um, or are interested in being mentors but they are not selected prior to your project because we would, wouldn't know that you needed that kind of support until you were selected. So no, um, but you know, it'll be great. I promise. And that should be hopefully enough. And uh, let's see, is processing for PI an area that would be possible to work with slash apply for this year? Um, yeah, the short answer for this is yes, uh, which is very related to previous project about like different tools and things. So if you are interested in working for processing for Pi, please, yeah, send us application. Um, I want to add a little bit more on the question about is there a list of mentor that will be participating? Uh, we currently don't have the list yet, but we'll have later. I just want to make sure that's uh, not confusing for folks. Yes, thank you. Um, how detailed should the project's description be in the application? Do I need to have most of it figured out already? Uh, it should, it can be, it should be detailed enough that we understand what you're doing and believe that you have, you know, you can execute the project that you'd like to do. Um, it doesn't need to be, you know, like a, a full detailed timeline of every single step that you're going to do, but um, detailed enough that, you know, it seems like you have a handle on the project that you're doing and can accomplish it with support. Um, is open innovation projects around open source um, will be supported during fellowship or do we need to use P5JS existing projects around the projects we are building? Is open inv inv innovation projects. Um, Hugh, do you have... Uh, an, an I, if I understand this question correctly, I think it's very similar to the previous question about like, are we only supporting processing on slash p5 or other projects the uh, the answer for that is yes like we are not just supporting processing and p5 some other software as long as it's related to our philosophy the processing foundation mission um they uh that's totally you know um like within our scope mm -hmm. okay. amazing thank you um is it possible to add collaborators after the application uh, yes, I mean, you're welcome to add collaborators post um, your application after being accepted. Again, you will just have the funds that we, you know, are supporting you with. It's, it's up to your discretion in terms of who you want to additionally work with. If you want to um, share that stipend with different individuals, you know, maybe you get different ideas as, as the project grows. That's up to you. Can you give an example of an appropriate scope of work for proposal? That is, what is too ambitious and what is too simple? Um, I'm just going to direct you to past fellowships to take a look at in terms of what has clearly been successful in a proposal and what has been done in the past within that time period. Um, I think someone just put the link again in um, in the chat. Thank you so much for people who are answering people's questions. Thank you so much. And I, that might be helpful in terms of thinking about what's been possible in the past. Yeah, and I also want to add that previous, uh, this year we bumped to the stipend. So the um so the all the previous fellow fellowship you see they actually are paid less than current stipends so when you look at previous ones you can keep that in mind so what what it means that is like maybe the project you propose might be need to be a little bit more comprehensive than the one you saw because the stipend has changed since then mm. yeah that's real thank you um okay so uh let's see is it in the scope for fellowships be for the fellowships be to bring processing P5JS scripting to another open source project to intersect two creative software communities? 
I think it's a yes. Uh, um, it really depends on what you what you wanted the tool to do. Uh, like what do you propose here? Sounds like a great idea. Like I'd love to see application that's discussing that. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, can we go to the next slide? I think there's. Oh, we yeah. We, we need to refresh, like, exit, and come back again. Okay. All right. Great. Um, let's see. What are some of the most common reasons for rejecting a project? That is a great question. This um, I haven't reviewed these projects in the past. Um, Q, did you participate in the reviewing process last year? Yeah, yeah, I have participated for a few years. Um, so some common reasons for project being rejected are uh, maybe that doesn't really align with the mission because some project would be like they want to launch a product, right? That has not a lot to do with project's mission or this project has to, is like only if they're personal art project that has not a lot of community involvement that sometimes become a reason that we we'll reject that. Um, so those are some like uh, typical uh, reasons the project are rejected, like either not aligned with the Positive Foundation Fellow, uh, sorry, Positive Foundation philosophy, or it's actually completely just a one artist artwork that doesn't have community involvement in them. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for giving us that institutional history. Um, how refined should the output be? Could a prototype or design be sufficient or do you need to have a clear, define a clear output at the application stage? Um, I, I think we covered it a little earlier that the outputs have been people being able to, yeah, share their, like share incredible projects at the end of the fellowship. And they've also been our um, medium articles about their process uh, interviews about what they've worked on. I think, you should try to be as you know um, clear in the in the application what you're trying to work on. But um, the fellowship is really to support you and your work. The hope is that you would you know have something really robust to share at the conclusion. But it's, um, you know we'll we'll kind of see what ends up happening. Um, okay, does the proposed project for necessarily have to include coding? And is it necessarily to use tools from the Processing Foundation? I, I think people in the past have done projects that did not include coding, but there is, we do have a commitment and an, um, and, you know, an emphasis to our, you know, there's, there's a whole section on continuing support in terms of supporting the projects that Processing Foundation has. Um, I don't know if Q, you want to add yeah. to this. Yeah, when you are working on this project, you can think about why Processing Foundation Fellowship is the best way to support this project. Like, why not other fellowship? Why this one? So I think as thinking about that in your application might be helpful to think about this question you proposed here. Um, it's like, what, what part of the Processing Foundation um, make you feel like that's a great place to support your project? Is that the philosophy? Is that the tool? Is this a community? You know one of them could be included in your application. Yeah, so not necessarily having to have this history with coding, but um, yeah, there's a lot more that makes up the Processing Foundation and feeling that this is the right home for your work. So thank you for that. Yeah, um, and, uh, if yeah. I can make an example for that. So yeah. last year there's this fellow uh, that's uh, Munas and uh, Yiching, they were working on teaching the in indigenous high school community in Taiwan uh, about creative tech. So they teach some tools from Processing Foundation, like P5 and Processing, but they, their scope is broader than that. They were thinking about uh, creative tech in indigenous community. Um, so you can think about that uh, as an example when you think about this question. Yeah, thank you. Um, will past experience in open source help or provide any edge in our application? I think we've kind of covered this um, in a lot of different ways. Yes, but also, you can be, you know be excited to participate in open source now i mean it doesn't have to have been everything that you've been working on but yes potentially it's supportive to your work and to being um being selected um is there is the stipend available as an honorarium or preferably in crypto for accessibility for disabled creatives who are on government assistance and medical benefits will 
be will be punitively affected by the stipend. Um, yeah, I think this question uh, can be we can check in with our accountant and lawyer on this because um, like we do have some like text obligations and things, so we might need to check with the lawyer on that. So if yeah. uh, if if that's something. Uh, if you decided to apply, you can definitely send us an email. We can have that in a private chat later. Yeah, thank you. Um, how flexible will meeting times be in cases for disabled artists who have complicated and fluctuating health needs and symptom flares? They'll be fairly flexible. We would like to see you, um, you know, we'd like to have you participate in the cohort as much as possible, but I think um, we can, that can look different ways. If it, if it can't be necessarily participating in a meeting, maybe there's other ways that we can think of in terms of um, having us, you know, support your work and um, be, you know, be with you on your journey. Um, so they can be flexible in terms of what are the needs of the fellows. And I think these are kind of, um, conversations that we'll have together at the start of the fellowship to kind of, you know, just see who's in the room and what what we need to do in terms of structure to support each other's um, wellness, bodies, work um, as we're kind of um, working together. So yeah, uh, yes. Regarding the priority areas, is accessibility defined broadly, specifically? Does it include making programming more accessible to beginners and others who don't have access to their own machines? Um, yeah. Yes, the accessibility here is very is defined really broadly. Uh, it could include web accessibility or access in a broader term. So P5.js ho hosted a P5.js Access Day in 2022, and we have a lot of different sessions about how we define access. Uh, if that's an uh, area you're interested in, you can definitely take a look at the uh, P5.js uh, Access Day 2022 and our access statement there as well. Amazing. Thank you. We have another page you need to, I think you need to refresh again because we have more coming. And I think uh, it, I know we are receiving a lot of questions. If we don't get to your question, um, please, I mean, I, I, I don't, I hate to, you know, what's it called? Uh, it's gruesome, but beat a dead horse, email us. We will try our best to, you know, communicate with you. Um, and at the end, I'll put in again, my email and the foundation email, and we'll try to talk to you. Um, but we'll get to as many as we can in the next nine minutes because we're going to come to a close. Um, okay. Where I can cover we? this. If Thank I'm you. going to teach a class using Keyfag.js, planning to create a new syllabus, what are some tips for applying for a teaching fellowship? Uh, some tips here could be like, how will you do that differently? Because a lot of people have done teaching P5 in so many different settings. We have folks teaching P5 in, for incarcerated in folks for uh, people who don't you know, have access to a laptop for people who are older than 50, you know, like, so what is particularly special about your fellowship? What is the syllabus that you are proposing that's gonna make your project different from others? Yes, okay, thank you. Um, what is required for someone to apply to the teaching fellowship, a topic to teach through P5 or just general coding in P5, for example? I think you can take a look at the previous uh, teaching fellowships. We have a uh, teaching fellow uh, coming up with syllabus about AI uh, for K-12 or like uh, uh, stuff like that. So the, um, the I feel like a lot of questions here is about like, can we teach something more or just FIFA? Or can we do something more, not just PFAL processing? The answer is yes, you can do more. Yeah. yeah, yeah, to every question, um, the ones that are continuing to come up. And I would say also maybe email Saber, who will be kind of um, your point person in terms of the teaching fellowship. Um, their email is in the chat. I can try it. I can also, it's Saber at processing.org. I'll just, oh, thank you, Sonia. Um, so yeah, feel free to, to email away. Um, will the timeline remain the same as before, despite the extension of the de application deadline? Things are going to be pushed. Um, we're still figuring out those dates, but they'll be pushed probably the same, about the two weeks that the application has been pushed. Are projects that are already fairly deep in development available for fellowship? Um, yes, uh, I think, I mean, I suppose. I, I think we're hoping to kind of help you support your work in general. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a brand new thing. Um, it can be something that you are working on. Maybe there's a there's a, a segment of your work, just getting specific around what it is that you're gonna be doing during the fellowship. So if it's like, oh, I mean, it can be 
I don't know what you're talking about, but <laughs> in terms of, um, I'm hoping that there's something that you can specify that is, this is how I'm going to use the fellowship funds. This is how I'm going to use the next three months. This is the segment of what I'll be, that that'll be for this time and not necessarily just, I'm working on this thing, fund me. I think it might be useful to be more specific um, about what you're doing. There's a mention of continuing support under the teaching fellowship info about continuing past projects. Would a project of a similar spirit be different, be different focus, be considered such, or do you work under that existing project? Um, there's a mention of continuing support under the teaching fellowship. So info. if I understand that correctly, the continuing support is under the general fellowship description yeah. and uh, not for the fe teaching fellowship. You can take a look at a previous uh, project from last year, 2022, from Aron. So Aron did a continuous project for P5 web serial. That's a project that's like, we had a, a library about P5 web serial a long time ago, but that's not maintained. So Aron applied a fellowship to do that. So that's a very typical scope for that. Yeah. Um, thank you. Okay. Is the stipend more of a project budget? Should we explain what we would spend the money on just because of the note that it is that the stipend is bigger. Um, the stipend is both functioning as a project budget and budget for you uh, as a fellow. So you can um, walk us through what you would be doing with the funds, but that's kind of, um, that's what that is. Um, when you say community, does that refer to the software community or a social community? Um, what we meant here is processing community, which is a very broad term. Uh, if you have participated in processing community day before in very different uh, regions, maybe you have a better understanding of that. If not, you can check the processing foundation uh, uh, page. Uh, the community here is very broad overall, but we, what do we talk, when we talk about community here, we'll talk about like the broader processing slash P5 community, which is not just about the software. Yeah, thank you. Um, what kind of community involvement is expected in the project? That can look a lot of different ways. Um, that can look like uh, kind of what, you know, Q has said, engaging the processing community um, with the work that you are doing and also potentially where, who, wherever you are kind of plugged in um, with people. <laughs> um, so that can be, you know, in terms of like the folks who you are collaborating with, the folks you are creating for, um, these are kinds of things that that can, um, that can look like. We are coming up on f four minutes, three, three or four minutes left. Um, do we have another slide of questions? Yes. Or? Okay, let's, let's try to get through. Um, and I think this will be the last one. Like, we, I don't think yes. we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, someone just asked, there will be a recording made of this available and we'll be sending that out. If it's supportive, I can also send out these slides to the folks who've, who've been here. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, where does the funding source for the stipend originate from? Uh, I think Sonia just answered this question, but uh, most of it, I believe, is from the National Endowment of the Arts and then also uh, donations. But I think that's, that's all the information that I have. Um, can you please once explain what is expected in the teaching fellowship? Yeah, I think you can. Uh, uh, the best place to do that would be go to our website. I uh, see the description and go to previous year's fellows uh, medium post to see what they have done. That would be the best way to get an understanding of that. Yes. Will a copy of this presentation be made available after this meeting for those who have uh, with processing disorders? Yes, I will. That's now it's definitely going to be. It was a maybe before. Now someone asked. It's over. Everyone's going to receive it. Enjoy. Um, yes. Can you better explain what kind of projects can fit the internationalization area? Um, uh, I can say a little bit. Maybe so you can add. So when I was a fellow myself in 2019, the project I worked on is to make p5.js tutorial uh, in Mandarin via a short video format. So that's an example of that. And in 2028, we had a, a fellowship coming, translating p5 website to Mandarin. Um, but I think right now, like, um, so those are some like examples for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Um, are you able to provide feedback on proposals? For example, proposals looks good, but some aspects need more fleshing out. Um, I, uh, in terms of, to be very transparent, I think in terms of 
also capacity that might be uh, challenging um, in, with reviewing the uh, fellow, the proposals coming for moving forward. But I was going to suggest something. I know we're about a minute out. If people are interested in kind of looking at each other's proposals, I think maybe there's in the chat, if you'd like to be like, hey, I'd like to partner with someone to look at proposals. This might be an opportunity to maybe post like, hey, I'm interested in providing, like looking at someone's proposal and then looking at mine. Um, you might be able to DM someone. Um, I would highly recommend getting someone to take a look at the at what you've done. We will have more information, you know, for finalists and folks who are kind of um, who participate in the process at that point. Um, but in the in the coming uh, week or so, it might be a little more challenging. Um, okay, I'm so sorry that we're coming to the end of our time. We thank you. Oh my God, this is such a cute slide. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, and good luck with your application, Purple Heart. Um, Feel free to um, email if you have any additional questions and please, yeah, share your emails there. Um, if it's useful to you in the chat to be like, I'm looking for support, you can. If not, I know we're coming to the end of our time. Um, we'll just give another minute or two for folks as they're kind of exiting. But thank you so much. I'm looking forward to connecting with all of you, looking forward to looking at your applications and hope that we get to, um, to you know, chat soon, um, work together in whatever ways it looks like. Yes, and feel free, Sonia's putting their email in there. Feel free to email them if you want help or questions, um, or you have nice memes. Sonia loves a meme. Um, please send Sonia memes. It will, it'll make you very competitive in your application process, actually. <laughs> good luck. Yeah, good <laughs> luck with your application. Like, 